What's up guys, this is Grant, the founder of CartFab.com, and today we're doing a mini bike build, specifically a big block engine swap and completely redoing the bike. This is the final product here. What this used to be was a Baja Heat mini bike, okay? It had a 196cc engine in it. If you look down here, it's got a 40 series uh, torque converter in it, much larger engine. It's a Honda GX 340, which is 338 cc's. And we're also gonna take a look at um, electric start kit install, drilling out the jet, installing a header, installing an intake, uh, auxiliary gas tank install, because as you can see, this engine comes right up to the top of the mini bike here. So we gotta put this auxiliary gas tank in there as well. And then uh, we're also gonna look at a little bit of upholstery, and then we're gonna take it out for a ride. So let's go check it out. Also, for every part or tool that you see in this video and you're wondering where I got it, take a look at the description. I have a link for everything you need to do this build right in the description. Thanks. All right, guys. This is my Baja 165 for MB200. Baja Heat, Mini Baja, Baja Warrior style mini bike. It's got a Comet 30 series torque converter on it. Okay. Uh, it's got battery for a headlight, um, that type of stuff. It's been pretty fun to ride. Okay. I took this off of a Baja Warrior, the engine. I took it off of this Baja Warrior. And uh, it's got an eight tooth sprocket on the front. Not sure how many teeth is on the back. I think it's 50. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this existing bike frame, take the engine off. Probably gonna have to take the battery off so there's more room. Because we've gotta fit this on it, okay? Gas tank's gonna go. Stock muffler's gonna go stock intake uh, is going to go. We're leaving the carburetor on there. Put a high flow intake on there. I'm going to put a header on it. Uh, we're going to keep the stock governor. going to add electric start to it. This is the engine that I robbed the flywheel from. So we got a basically an eBay electric start kit that we're putting on there. Keeping the 40 series drive unit, keeping the 40 series driven unit. This is gonna go up, okay? I'm gonna have to fabricate a lot of stuff here. I may or may not be able to use what I did here for the driven unit. I don't know if you can see this back here, but the little bit of tubing is connected to a jack shaft, okay? That was just to keep the driven unit up a little bit to keep it from scraping. But that's a six inch driven. I'm not sure how many inches this thing is, but I want to say it's like six, seven and a half, seven and a half, I want to say. I think it's seven and a half and eight and a half, and this is the seven and a half. So once we get all that on there, the Honda GX340, it should be really fun to ride. So I'm going to get working. All right, so I took off the uh, throttle. I'm probably going to be replacing that and uh, got the bolts, the four engine mounting bolts off. All right, got the engine off. That was the easy part. But as you can tell, this is the jack shaft setup that I had. It's an existing jack shaft setup. Probably won't be able to use it in the position that it's in and at the length that it's in. So I will have to modify it, uh, probably raise it up a little bit but um, I may actually have to move it back further for the engine to fit, to have the proper uh, drive unit to driven unit distance for the belt. Okay, so I've taken off gas tank, stock muffler, stock air box. So now we'll have enough room up top for it to clear uh, the mini bike, uh, the main beam up here that goes across without any additional modifications to the height of that beam. We're just gonna stick it right under there. But again, we'll see what happens. All right, so as you can tell, it just doesn't fit. Okay, so it's running into that little brace right over here. 
and then we're also running into the battery box. So we're going to take off the battery box over here and we're going to possibly cut out that little brace. We'll see after we cut out the battery. Alright, so valve cover is hitting the rear brace as you can see. The engine is not sitting flat at all. It's hitting up here. Okay, so um, there's that. Then the drive unit may actually need to stay this far spaced out just so we can have the driven unit clear the uh, cooling fins here. So again, this is the drive unit. This is the 30 series, this is 40 series. So the, the other unit right here, which is has a large diameter compared to this, um, it's gonna sit kind of right there. So um, we don't want it hitting this. We don't want it hitting this as well. So we got some clearance issues, but we'll work through it. Okay, so it's looking promising that I'll be able to keep the, the existing jack shaft setup that I've got here on the mini bike. Um, this motor mount, I'll have a link in the description for that. So if you want to go ahead and click on the link in the description, if you're interested in doing this engine swap, you're, you're going to need another motor mount plate or mount your, your own plate and you're going to have to actually raise it. Because what raising it did is what it allowed the engine to slide forward much more. Okay. And it allowed the uh, valve cover right here to be able to clear the uh, this little beam here okay and if you notice it's very very tight that is actually touching the frame so I might have to notch out that area then uh, as we go around here to the other side of the bike um, I have a spacer right here so it's not a big deal right now but I'm gonna need to move the uh, drive unit back towards the engine so we can get the drive and driven unit sheaves, this edge right here lined up with this edge here. Actually, the middle of this lined up with the middle of that. So that's kind of what you look at. When you're at idle, you want the belt to be um, right here in the middle. So we align the middle of the drive unit to the middle of the driven unit here. So, um, you know, the uh, oil cap here is pretty close. And the width of the frame is such that the uh, the bolts look like they'll fit without widening these two pieces right here. I was thinking I was going to have to take off the motor mount completely, widen this out, actually cut the tubing here. But it's looking like I might not need to do that. And I might actually be able to just put it in as is with this additional motor mount here and just drill some holes with my hole saw. Then um, this will probably require a little bit of tweaking, but uh, the header here that I have, I have a three-stage header. Um, it's just a bolt-on thing, but depending on where I've got my engine hooked up, the end of it is actually gonna be blowing. This is where it's actually gonna be. You know, it's not actually you know tightened up on all the way, but the end of it's gonna be blown right here. So. What I'm thinking I'm going to have to do is uh, cut a few slits in the header here and then pull it out and put some welding wire in those slits and then TIG weld it closed. So that'll, that'll effectively bring that out so it'll, it'll be protruding maybe right over here on the, uh, on the frame. So. Initial mock-up looks good. I'm gonna have to put this electric start kit together. Um, so yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna put red Loctite on all the bolts under the flywheel because I do not want them to come off. As far as I'm concerned, they should be on there permanently. Now, um, the initial flywheel that I had on here, you know, this engine was already had an electric start flywheel on there, but I wanted a higher amperage charging system and a genuine flywheel, genuine Honda flywheel on my other engine. 
So this one isn't going to be revving as high, so that's why I'm okay with putting just a stock flywheel on here that's some, you know, Chinese aftermarket, whatever. Um, but the bolts are not self-tapping like, like the bolts that come in the, the genuine Honda flywheel. So the threads are already here from the self-tapped self ones. I'm just going to kind of get them just a little snug and they're not going to come off because I got that thread locker on there. Then I'm going to put this uh, little guard here on it. This guard allows me to run the wiring out through here without having it catch on the flywheel when the flywheel's spinning. So if you look at it, there's a little knob right there. There we go. So this is the electric starter and the solenoid. Uh, just pops right in here. Now, if you have uh, like a Honda GX 390 or 340 or whatever engine that you've got and you're and it doesn't originally come with electric start this is gonna this there's gonna there's not gonna be a hole right here okay there's gonna be like a, a little thing that you can punch out um, I wouldn't actually suggest punching it out because it won't break free cleanly um, go ahead and take like a hole saw, like a two and a half inch hole saw, make sure you center up the, the bit and drill it out and then take either a Dremel or you know some type of rotary tool to grind out the aluminum and just grind out that extra space until you can get everything to fit. And it looks like it's kind of a tight fit already, but just a little bit off. Again, this isn't genuine Honda, so who knows what the fitment's going to be like. But it should just... So it almost looks like the electric starter is going to sit a tiny bit closer to the flywheel the way it's positioned. But there's only one way to find out if it'll work or not, and that's just by trying it out. So there you have it. Um, so we got the uh, charge coil, the little bracket the, that protects the charge coil, coil wire, and the electric start. Okay, so really quickly, um, there are a few casting flaws. You can see that there might be a little bit of damage here to the taper. Um, so it's not going to be a perfect fit. And it's definitely not smooth in here where it needs to be against the flywheel. So I would highly recommend lapping the flywheel to the crank. And you can just do that with some valve grinding compound. I have a link to the valve grinding compound in the description. You basically just put a little bit of it on the flywheel taper right in here and pop it on your crankshaft uh, after you pull out the key and just rotate it uh, left and right, left and right, left and right until um, it gets kind of smooth so it'll have a better mating surface so you won't have a chance of spinning the flywheel on the crank. I'll just use a pair of side cutters here now notice the way the flywheel key is already installed. It's, it's straight with the shaft, not straight with the taper. That's super important. because You can end up damaging something if you install it the wrong way. So you just take those side cutters, pop it out, put it in a safe spot, and let's do the lapping. All right, so valve grinding compound. Just uh, put it on the shaft here, pop it on, maybe hold the crank on the other side, just want to check the mating surfaces, 
and you want to make sure it has that, see it has, has that gray uh, sheen to it. It's kind of what you want to look at. Make sure it has that gray sheen and it's uniform just throughout the entire mating surface. Um, basically that, that'll knock down all these little edges here. Knocks down the edges on the key, on the keyway. And then it knocks down those rough casting spots as well, just so you can get a much better mating surface. So you can get the maximum friction when you torque down your flywheel nut. Because as I've said in my previous videos, it's not the key that holds the flywheel in place. It's the friction applied from torquing down that flywheel nut, okay? It's the friction that holds it in place. If you under torque the flywheel nut, you will probably spin the flywheel, which can shear the keyway off, or shear the key off of the keyway, basically. So it's very important to torque it down to spec, get those mating surfaces just right. Also, since this is not a genuine Honda flywheel, uh, you wanna check for any casting flaws that are cracks. You know, you're gonna see a little casting roughness, but you wanna check for cracks all around to make sure everything's good. So I have the key in here. It's lined up straight with the shaft, not with the taper. And the flywheel just pops right on. Now depending on what year you've got for your flywheel, the, the key might be cut in a different spot. So I think it's like 2011 prior to that, it's going to have a key cut in one spot. 2011 up to current is going to have a key cut in another spot. Um, I'm going to double every double check everything with my timing light um, just to make sure. But uh, I'm pretty sure I got the right flywheel because this engine's pretty old. So I used this uh, piston stop here, and I put it inside the uh, spark plug hole. I rotated the engine around to find top dead center here using this degree well. And I use this little marker to find it. Um, after that, I went ahead and put a mark on the flywheel. I don't know if you can see it right here, this little, this little black line. And then I spun the engine over, and wherever the light was flashing, I made another mark right here. I don't know if you can see that one. So when these two line up, all right, we're pretty close. Like if you look at it from the side, you know, it might be something like that. So I have to make sure you look at it at the right spot. But I got it all kind of lined up there, as you can tell. And wherever that spot is, if you've set your degree well to top dead center, that's where your timing is at. So if you look here, we're at like 24 and a half degrees before top dead center. And that's, you know, 22.5 to 25. And there's variation. so. You know, 20, 24 degrees. That's right where we want to have it, just to do that to verify my timing. And uh, now that we have that done, we're going to put the engine back together and keep trying to figure out how to get that on the mini bike. <laughs> so I've got this little plate that screws into the side cover that fits into the keyway for the crankshaft. And that'll lock everything in place so I can torque down the flywheel nut with a torque wrench. All right, so I got the carb off. We've got some engine degreaser here on top of it. This is a, I don't know, it's a gasket that goes in between the very front of the carb and the high flow adapter here I've got. This is the choke. This is the, uh, the initial bowl that collects junk. This is the main bowl. Um, this is part of the idle pilot. It goes in right above the idle pilot. This is the idle pilot jet. So if your engine isn't running right, on idle. It's usually this is clogged up. Emulsion tube, I'm going to clean that out. This is the main jet. I'm going to drill it out. Um, this is the screw to adjust your idle. Goes right up here, somewhere on the top. Yeah, right there. And this is the float bowl. So, yeah, I got it all apart. I'm going to take it apart, clean it, and put it all back together. Okay, so I'm using a 41 thousandths drill bit here. I got it in the little pin vise. 
I'm gonna drill this jet out now. Okay, so carburetor, it's all set up, ready to go. Um, now I'm working on the engine mounting position, which is critical. I gotta get the left right, right? So you don't want a bike leaning one way or another when you're riding it. Um, <clears throat> so this engine mount, actually, with the way everything's set up over here, would create uh, an issue, because I can't slide the engine back far enough without it hitting the valve cover right over here on this uh, vertical beam. So um, what I'm gonna end up doing is actually cutting out this entire jack shaft assembly. Um, and what I'm doing here is this, this motor mount plate is a little bit too long. So I'm gonna cut it off here and that kinda has an angle on it right here as well. I don't know if you can see that, <clears throat> but that'll fit right up in here okay so that gives me a spot where the engine will be furthest up and then i'll get the engine bolted into place then i'll take the jack shaft assembly that i cut off here and i will actually weld it to this plate here 90 degrees to this so straight up I'll make sure everything's in plane up right left down whatever to get everything aligned for the torque converter then I'll have this entire assembly to, to be welded here and I'll try to avoid even cutting that, which I initially thought I was gonna have to do. So I might make this jack shaft assembly. So the jack shaft assembly is actually gonna move forward a little bit and up. So then the driven unit won't come into contact over here. That's the plan anyway. Alright, so I got the motor pretty far forward, engine, whatever you want to call it. If you look here, I got um, it cut in a few spots. I'm going to be MIG welding it, so I'm not too concerned about the gap there. Um, and then if you look up here closer, uh, I was having issues with this friction nut right up there hitting the frame, so that's gone. Um, the valve cover has just a little bit of room and overall it's fitting up pretty dang good. So uh, that was after cutting the front of this engine mount off and uh, there's plenty of room for that air filter here. Uh, the exhaust obviously is going to be hitting down here somewhere so we're going to have to modify that a little bit. Um, so yeah. Pretty happy. Okay, so we got everything tacked into place. Got the engine mount tacked in and got the chain on had to lengthen the chain by a couple links uh, we got it all hooked up it's actually worked out pretty good it's perfect tightness um, perfect tension so um got to do a little bit more bracing here maybe brace from here down to here i'm definitely going to do one in here in the middle from here to there just to get everything stabilized and there's the matter of the gas tank if you look on the other mini bike, I already did this gas tank um, here in the back. I have an identical gas tank. So I'll be bending some tubing, having it go around here, welding it onto the frame, having the tank sit back there just behind the seat. So uh, once I get that done, then I'll have to hook up the throttle and uh, then I'll be able to ride it, I hope.
Okay, so I got this little piece of tubing bent. Um, marked it here and here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it with the chop saw and line it up on the bike. Alright, so I got the little braces back here all painted up. Just wanted to show you fuel tank. You know, I got a little space here so when you sit down, you, know, you can stick your butt up against there if you want to scoot back a little bit. But, you know, overall, I really like the way that the fuel tank sits on the mini bike and how stable it's going to be. Um, it just looks really nice. It looks kind of like something that was meant to be there. Okay. So as you can see here with the exhaust, I had to add a little spacer here, cut off the stud a tiny bit so it'll clear the exhaust pipe. But if you look right here, notice how there's some cuts. Basically what I've done is I've cut three cuts right to the almost a little bit past the very middle of the tubing and two over here and then bent it. So what that has allowed is for the exhaust to clear the frame so it's not blowing hot exhaust onto the frame right there. Okay, so here it is all installed on the bike. If you look here, I installed a 3 8 inch nut, just slid over the existing stud to take up that extra spot rather than putting in new studs. Got that one chopped off and I got the header wrap on there. I had a little extra left over from my Yamaha R1 motorcycle right here. Anyway, kind of got it all hooked up and I still need to weld the motor mount down. It's just tacked in. I need to do a little bit more welding up here. As you can see, it's got a broken uh, strap that holds on the tank. And I gotta hook up the throttle. And then, I do believe this will be ready for riding after that. All right, so I added a brace right here and I added a brace right there in the back. So that should sturdy things up a bit. Now onto the gas tank here, or uh, the imitation gas tank. It's got a little break right here, clean break there. And the top was barely holding on. So I'm gonna have to carefully bend it back into shape and I'm gonna use my TIG welder uh, to get a nice strong weld on both sides there without a lot of build up there. And, uh, you know, I'm tempted just to put it back on, but who knows, I might just go ahead and start painting the fenders while I got everything off, um, and just to get the paint set up, but I don't know, who knows, I got these dents in them from where the steering stops were broken, because this thing, this might actually be used, okay, actually, I had to, when I first got it, this part was totally jacked up. I had to weld right around here so the steering stops would work. But the plan is to paint the fender here, paint this gas tank here, and then paint the rear fender. So I think what I'll do next, finish off tonight, would be uh, just working on the gas tank, get the fenders off, clean them up a little bit, prime them, and paint them. All right guys, as you can see up here, the tank is primed and it's drying. Washed up my hands as best as I could. But I wanna show you something that just happened. While I was removing the paint with my angle grinder, I got this little doozy here on my arm. It caught in my glove right here, okay? And it actually went all the way through into my arm. My arm uh, kind of stopped it. If you're working with power tools, make sure you be safe, or if you're going to be dumb like me, you got to be kind of tough. But, you know, it's just a little scrape. It should heal up pretty well. You 
Okay, so if you look over here, I put a little piece of rubber underneath the tank where that bracket is. It's a very thin piece, so that will keep, it's kind of like a vibration dampener, but it'll keep uh, the tank from sliding back and forth when I'm, I'm revving the engine. <clears throat> so what I wanted to show you guys was this. This is the throttle setup. These are new grips that I got on there. Um, as you can see, I have this custom setup. It's a little piece of spring, actually that I have over the throttle end here that kind of keeps the throttle from bending and it, and it keeps the throttle from popping in and out because it doesn't have a threaded end right here. So I basically took a spring, put it over here. It's tapered, so it's thin on this side, thick on that side. And I put some heat shrink over top of it and then another section of heat shrink over here so that I'll get everything secured. To kind of show you what I'm talking about, this right here is the same type of setup. It's, it's a little spring, you can get it at a hardware store. It's tapered, so it's small on this side, large on this side. Throttle end, and then heat shrink here, heat shrink here. This big one will go over, small, small one will go to the end of the spring here, and that'll um, keep everything from getting kinked. And I, I kinda like the setup there. Okay, so that will keep it from fraying if you add a little solder to it with the soldering iron. All right, <laughs> sticker time. So I got the Honda wings right here, one on each side, okay. And then I got the Punisher with the military star here. Another decal right on the tank. <clears throat> um, after I finish painting this one, we're gonna have another of the same sticker right here, just back here, bigger, 10 inch sticker. Then um, for the front, we're gonna have just the Punisher one, just right here on the inside of the front. Then I got another funny little one up here. Okay, so I got the fenders painted, got them primed and then painted. Had to bang out a lot of the, uh, the dents here. I just took a hammer, put it on, on the vise here, and it has a little anvil on it, and I just banged it out. So it's, it's relatively straight now. If you look at, if you rewind a little bit, you'll see that it, it wasn't straight there. And I, I got my stickers. The big one's going on the, the, the fender here, so we'll get them, get them going. This one's on the front. <laughs> yeah, buddy! And then of course, engine shroud, 49cc. You know, it's just a little scooter engine, just a motorized bicycle. That's all this thing really is, right? <laughs> America. <laughs> we got this Punisher right here back on the fender, 10 inch. <sighs> yeah, got the seat off. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna do the side cover next. Okay, so this is part of the uh, front forks, it's the top. Part. Here's the shocks. Got them charged. There's one. There's two. I used a synthetic fork oil here. Put 50 milliliters or 50 cc's, whichever you prefer, into them. Got them all charged up. Got the side cover painted. Got the pull start uh, disassembled and painted. Okay. So if you look over here, mineral spirits is like clear. So this, all this crap came off the bearings. So after I do that, I'm gonna grease them up with this little guy right over here. Synthetic green grease, I don't know if you can see it. That little yellow and green tube. So once I get that done, we'll put it back together. I don't know I said I'll be done and ready to ride it soon, but you know, here's the seat. I'm gonna have to reupholster that. It's all taken apart, so I'll do that while the paint dries. Okay, so I did a little surgery on the seat. Uh, I riveted some still pieces to it in order to get it to sit under here because uh, it had a piece of plastic that was broken off of it. So I just riveted this piece of metal onto it. This has been jacked up for quite some time. So I got another steel plate riveted it to the seat. So <clears throat> show you a quick demonstration. So it goes under here. So the part 
goes right in here nice and solid so now that I've got that taken care of I'm just gonna go ahead and get that foam back on there and uh, staple it all together all right so I'm here in the kitchen this is the old seat cover this is the new vinyl green and brown I use some marine vinyl here and this yellow stuff is called welting sewed it all together using a sewing machine and a bonded nylon thread also this uh, vinyl has like buttons on it they're actually called half ball cover buttons and uh, you just snap them together you put the fabric over it and snap them together so it looks pretty good so we'll get it all stapled together all right so for the half ball cover buttons and that looks slick I'm gonna get rid of that marker mark just wipe that off but man this looks so much better so yeah it's just a little bit a little bit of cheap marine vinyl welting half ball covers and some effort and you can make a crappy looking seat look way better than it did brand new all right <laughs> So there it is in all its glory. Um, I'm gonna start putting the bike back together tomorrow morning. Well, here it is, finally finished, for the most part. You know, there's still a little stuff to do, but here's a quick rundown. Uh, this is the one-way check valve. The tank needs a vent, so it lets air in, doesn't let fuel out. Okay, so I got that installed. Uh, seat is on, secured, nice and tight. Um, you know, rear fender, got the Punisher military star up here as well. Got the Honda wings in the front and then got everything painted. Got the bearings greased on the top and the bottom, all assembled. Used Loctites here, Loctite um, thread locking compound for attaching the uh, shocks. Got new uh, dust covers on it. They're kind of just hanging out there. I might use like a, a, a strap of some sort to hold this other one on since it is a different size. Um, shocks are charged. Uh, I put in bearings in this last year, but if you look at it, they're good. They are definitely good. Bearings are great. So, America, yeah. <laughs> then moving over to the engine side cover. Uh, 49 cc's, right? <laughs> you got the chain. The chain's a little loose. I've been thinking about putting a little chain um, tensioner in there, right there. Um, but we'll see. Uh, probably not anytime soon. The fuel line, I did insulate it with that aircraft um, fuel line insulation here. It's just silicone uh, coated fiberglass. And what else? Yeah, I just love the seat. Oh my gosh, it turned out really nice. Really, really nice. Love it. It's nice and tight, nice and firm. Um, yeah. So, you know, this isn't the end of it. As, as you do notice, um, oh yeah, I also have paracord. I replaced the pull cord with, with uh, paracord. Um, just some stuff I had laying around. So this is the kill switch. <clears throat> I have a spot here for lights. If you look here, you know, obviously it's electric start right there. I'm gonna put a battery in there, but um, not anytime soon. Like I said, the bearings, they're great. Love them. Yeah, so chain guard, I might put a chain guard in. I'll add a battery later. This is all stuff for later. Um, I might put like some uh, LED lights underneath, like right under here, right under here. Um, but not anytime soon, then definitely I'm going to be putting a, um, a guard over here because I do not want pant leg or skin to be removed when you're riding this thing, you know, because your leg sits right there. So um, that's that for now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ride it, strap on the GoPro, see what it sounds like, see what it feels like. I already took it out once before and man, oh, I love it. I love it.